Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Wildcat Chat. I'm your host, Sharice Presley. We'll kick off this week with a little bit of football, volleyball, soccer, and even basketball. But first, let's move to a feature on former football player, Mike McCarthy. Just want to thank everybody for coming. I just want to tell you this is a special, special honor uh, to share with my family and, and have the opportunity to come back here to Baker University. I can't tell you how much this means to me. i just like to thank Dr. Long and, and everybody else involved in, in the process. Uh, it's truly an honor to be put into be put in the Hall of Fame. The 5-3 and three Baker Wildcats are taking on the Central Methodist Eagles today, but it's also the day that Mike McCarthy, head coach of the Green Bay Packers, is being inducted into the Baker Hall of Fame. Oh, it's, it's truly an honor. It's, it, it's, it's more of a reflection of the football team uh, that I was, I was fortunate enough to play on. And the 85 and 86 team, those two teams, was, was really a, it was a great learning experience for me, myself because it's something that I look back on because it, it, I thought it was a great reflection of chemistry. Uh, because actually McCarthy was an all-conference tight end when he played for the Wildcats. He was the captain of the 1986 Baker University team that went to the national championship game. He began his coaching career at the Fort Hayes State University as graduate assistant before moving on to the University of Pittsburgh. His first NFL coaching job was with the Chiefs. He spent six years as their QB coach. As offensive coordinator for the Saints, in 2000, he was named the NFC Assistant Coach of the Year. After a brief stint with the 49ers, he was hired January 12, 2006 as the Packers head coach. Now at age 40, Three, he is 13 and 9 as head coach. Because when, you, when you reflect back to these days, it's all about the relationships that you're able to build uh, during, during, during your college days and, and really to walk into the lunch of the day and then see everybody here. And it's, uh, uh, it's very, very, very gratifying. Uh, I, was over, I was overwhelmed. Thanks a lot, Coach, for joining us. We know you had a busy day, uh, an exciting one for you, a lot of emotion. All right, Alex Damon, Coach Mike McCarthy. Back to you, Sharice. Thanks, Alex. And now, Chris Campbell in the studio with head football coach Mike Grossner. Thanks, Sharice. I'm now joined by head Baker football coach Mike Grossner. Coach, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. Let's start off by talking about the win over Central Methodist. Tell me what were the key points in the victory. Defense. <laughs> And two big field goals, but we played great defense. Um, you know, offensively, it, it, from a scoreboard standpoint, it looks like we sputtered a little bit. And, and it also, in the stats, when you only put up about 150 yards mm -hmm. offense. But I really think we left a lot of points on the field. Uh, we got two touchdowns called back. We missed two field goals. And then you look at the penalties against us, and, and I'm not so sure we're a team that puts up 16 penalties which we did the other night, 16 for about 150. And when you've got that going on, you're, you are going to sputter. You're, you, you're not going to consistently get first downs, and you're not going to score in the red zone when you've got a lot of penalties. So there were a lot of things that attributed to a very close game, but we've won close games, and we're getting used to winning games like that. Okay. We uh, also, during the Central Methodist game at halftime, we had a uh, former player here at Baker introduced into the Hall of Fame, uh, head Green Bay Packers coach Mike McCarthy, Coach, tell me about your relationship with Coach McCarthy. Well, we were teammates together in college. You know, he was our tight end. I was a quarterback of a junior college team. And uh, then we continued on. We stayed in touch. He came to Baker. I went to Bethany College my last two years. And Mike was uh, real instrumental in me getting my first GA coaching job at Fort Hayes State. He called me and said, there's an opening. Uh, our old track coach from Bethany was up there running the track program. He said, hey, call Coach Grubb and... Uh, let's get you up here. So we ended up coaching, you know, as GAs together at Hayes. And then I went to Europe for a little while. He made his uh, volunteer trek through University of Pitt and then to the Chiefs. And uh, we've stayed in touch. It, it's funny, though. You, you know, after college, you kind of lose that social uh, seeing each other quite a bit. But we mm -hmm. talked. And uh, then in about the year 2000, we got together for a breakfast down in Arizona and uh, from there we've stayed pretty close and uh, you know I've, I've visited him quite a bit up in Green Bay and, and, and went to New Orleans when he was there and uh, real proud of his progress and what he's done. Right, yeah, that has been very nice and we're glad to have him now in the Hall of Fame. Let's scoot back into uh, Baker mode and talk a little about this four-way tie uh, for second place here in the Heart of America Conference. Uh, 
Arguably, Graceland has a leg up with a 6-2 and two record, but we also have uh, Mid-America, Mo Valley, and, and Baker's also in this. And uh, Graceland's ranked 20th, Mid-America's ranked 18th, and Missouri Valley's ranked 15th. And Baker isn't nationally ranked. How do you feel about this whole situation? You know, I, you just educated me on it. <laughs> uh, we, we're going week to week, and, and, and it's up to us. Our own destiny is in our hands. You know, if, if we beat Missouri Valley and then beat Mid-America, that'll take care of them, and they'll, they'll be out of the rankings or, or lower, and I would hope we, were, we would be put in there. So, uh, you know, the real true standings are at the end. We're, we're just uh, taking them one at a time, and as you can see, we can't overlook anybody. I mean, mm -hmm. we're going to play close ball games. That's the nature of our football team. We play good defense, special teams, and we just try to hammer it out on offense. So... Uh, should we be ranked? Probably. Uh, you know, the way that looks, yeah, we're 5-2 and two in the league, and, and, but we haven't blown anybody out, you know, other than Culver Stockton early in the year. So maybe they're, the people that do the ratings are looking and saying, hey, they're just getting by. They're not that great a team. They're uh, winning. That's okay with us because in the end, if we keep winning, we'll be up there and we'll be in the playoffs. Okay. Well, speaking of wins, we hope there's one this week against 15th ranked Missouri Valley playing at Missouri Valley. It's a must-win situation. What is the team's strategy or plan? <laughs> win. <laughs> uh, it's hard. It, you know, they're a good football team, but, but our confidence factor is pretty high from three wins in a row. Plus, we've beaten them two out of the last three years, so we feel pretty good that we match up well. The, I just got done watching some tape on them, and I, and I don't have an answer yet. Hopefully, Coach Thorne's got one. Uh, but uh, they're so good on defense. They run around. They're, they've got guys up front that if you don't block them, they're going to make a lot of plays. So we've got to figure out how to move the football and not turn it over. And then defensively, Coach's got a big challenge of stopping their two running backs. They're, they're very good. Uh, uh, number 31 for them, he's a Southern Illinois transfer. He runs the ball real hard. We haven't seen a big physical back like that since Graceland. Mm -hmm. And we did a pretty good job against Messam of Graceland, so hopefully we can do that against this guy. Uh, his last name's Allen. That's all I know about him. And then their other back, number 20, can really run. If you give him a seam, he can, he can go. I, I think where their Missouri Valley's lacking a little bit this year is their quarterback play's been uh, inconsistent, and that's, that's uh, the, in their two losses, I, th I think that affected them. So... Uh, but, you know, now we're seven, eight games into it. Mm -hmm. He's had time to, to get under center and, and get a lot of experience. So it's going to be a battle. It's at their place. They know they got to win. We know we got to win. Uh, it's a team that's, uh, I think, going to play the best defense and, and uh, not turn the ball over. Okay. You talk about their defense. Uh, Baker's defense has been solid all year. You know, Brad Page is kind of leading the pack, taking it uh, to them. But Let's talk a little about uh, the offensive situation. Uh, recently, Derek Dorfler's been kind of the key guy to make get points. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been 40-plus yards, 50-plus yards field goals. It's possible the ranked team like Missouri Valley isn't going to allow that. What is the offense going to have to do to put it in the end zone? Uh, we've got to come up with some plays, I think, going from about the 30 on in, thinking score touchdowns from there, make some big plays that way. And then, uh, you know, we've grinded it out against a few teams. I don't know if we can pound it up against Missouri Valley. They're pretty stout up front. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've just got to take the idea that don't make mistakes and dink and duck down the field and, and then take our chances at some big plays for touchdowns. Uh, you know, we get inside their 45, we got a chance at three points. Now, we're playing on grass this week. Mm -hmm. That's the first time all year. Yeah. So we're going to go practice on grass, and hopefully Derek can kick off grass. Mm -hmm. He's used to the turf. But uh, we can't lay it all on Derek's shoulders. I, I, I trust him uh, maybe too much, you know, pulling yeah. a 60-yarder yeah. this week. Probably should have punted looking <laughs> back at it, but he just missed it. But uh, we feel comfortable as a team that we're learning how to win together, and hopefully we can pull out another one. Okay. One final question, Coach. We've seen it recently with like teams like Rutgers and, and Florida. Trick plays. Uh, is mm -hmm. there a trick play in your arsenal if it comes down to it, to a situation there's three minutes left, you're seven points down that you can run, that you can put it on a team like Missouri Valley? Yeah, we've had two trick plays that we practiced the last couple of weeks, and I didn't think it was the opportune time to do it. I, I thought we were in control of the football game. Sometimes trick plays can backfire, and all of a sudden they score on you mm -hmm. instead of you scoring. So we held them in the bag. Now, against a team like Missouri Valley, I... I've, I've looked at one play that I kind of like, but the thing about them is they got so much team speed on defense that uh, 
if, if you don't block it well, all of a sudden it turns into a 20, 25-yard loss or a fumble. So okay. still looking at that, and, and I, I've, I've got one that I think can work, uh, but hopefully we don't need them. Hopefully it's yeah. just a uh, – I think it's going to be a heavyweight match, and, and who's got the most will. Okay, well, a good matchup we hope it will be. Good luck to you, Coach. This has been head coach Mike Grossner of the football team. Uh, back to you, Cherise. Thanks, Chris. And now we're going to a quick commercial break.